What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about one of the most requested topics on this channel which is async await in python or asynchronous programming in python so let us get right into it all right so let us first talk about what asynchronous programming is not asynchronous programming is not multi-threading it's also not multi-processing it is concurrent programming and we're not going to talk about the whole idea of concurrent programming and the whole coding patterns because that would deserve a series on its own uh, we're going to talk about the basic principles and how we can implement those in Python. Now, let's look at a quick example here. Let's say we have a function one, which is being called. We have a function two, which is being called. And we have a function three, which is being called. So if this function, the main function that those functions are being called in is synchronous, this means that we're going to call function one and we're going to then call function two when function one returns uh, or actually terminates or returns is prob uh, probably the right term here. So we're only going to call function two when function one is done, when it returns. And then we're going to call function three when function two returns. This is synchronous. Now, if we use multi-threading or multi-processing, that would not be the same as asynchronous programming because in multi-threading, we would define three threads in this case, and we would run all of those functions at the same time or roughly at the same time, we would try to either run them simultaneously or at least create the illusion of a simultaneous execution. This is not the goal of asynchronous programming. With asynchronous programming, what we want to do is let's say function one does something productive and then it requests some data from a database, from an API, or it just sleeps in general just for the sake of waiting. If that happens, we want to not waste any CPU time and we want to start executing function two even though this function has not returned yet, but it's not doing anything at the moment. So we can only run one task at the same time. We're not doing any uh, multi-processing or multi-threading. We're doing one thing at the same time. But if the function one is sleeping or waiting or being unproductive, we can use that time to already start executing function two and maybe function three. So that's the basic idea of asynchronous programming. So in order to do asynchronous programming in Python, we need to import a library called async.io. So import async.io. And now in order to define a function as asynchronous, because we're not going to just say the whole program is asynchronous, just specific functions are going to be asynchronous, we need to use the async keyword. So we're going to say async def and a function name. In this case, I'm going to choose main. We're going to have a main function which is going to be asynchronous. And if we only have that main function, of course, the whole program is going to be asynchronous. Uh, but that is the idea. Now let's do a very basic function here. We're going to say print A and we're going to say print B. And in between, we're going to sleep, but we're not going to sleep with time.sleep. We're going to sleep with async.io.sleep. So async.io.sleep for one second. Now, the important thing is here that we need to await this. If we're calling an asynchronous function, we need to do it with a task, we need to await it, or we need to do async io.run. In this case, we're going to say await, which basically means that we're going to wait for this statement to finish. And before this, this call here finished, we're not going to do anything else. This is important because in asynchronous programming, as we learned, uh, we're just going to proceed if something uh, wastes time, you could say. So in this case, we're going to print A, then we're forced to wait because we're saying await this thing here. And then we're going to print B once the thing is done. In order to run the main function, we need to say async io dot run main. And it's very important that we actually call the main function. We're not just referring to it as we do in multi-threading. We're actually calling the function. So we use these parentheses here as well. It's not like saying target equals main in a thread, we're actually calling the function here, we're not just referring to it. So I'm going to run this and you're going to see a very basic program, A, one second, and then B. So that is not really asynchronous programming yet. So what do we have to do here? Let's introduce a second function. Let's say we have an, another asynchronous function, which we're just going to call other function. And in here, we're going to print something else. In here, we're going to print one, and then two, one, two, and in between, we're going to sleep. Let's say await async io dot sleep. We're going to sleep for two seconds here. Now, if we go ahead and call that function, instead of sleeping here, we can just go ahead and say await other function. 
but that is not going to be very asynchronous because this is actual synchronous, actually synchronous programming. Why? Because we're, we're printing A, we're awaiting the function, which is the same as just calling it in a synchronous way. We say, okay, don't execute this until all of this is done. So that's not really asynchronous. Uh, but this is how you could do synchronous programming in an asynchronous function. So what do we do, however, if we want to do something with the main function here, we want to print A, and then we want to call that function, thus printing one, but then while this function here is sleeping, we already want to be doing that. So we already want to be printing B. And once this is done, it's going to print two. In order to do that, we need to work with tasks. So what we can do here in the beginning of the function is we're going to say, uh, task equals async IO dot create task. And we're going to create the task other function. So we're going to call the function in here again. And this task now is scheduled. And basically, this means writing it like that basically means that once we have some idle time, we're going to call that task. So I'm not even sure if it's going to call it if we just run this, yeah, it's going to call the beginning. So you can see a B, then it's done. It's calling one, but it can see here, okay, we're sleeping. So I'm going to terminate. Why is it terminating? Because yes, we call it, but this function is the main function. We're not awaiting this function, this other function, which means that once I reach the end of this function, I'm done. So I don't need to actually wait for you and, and wait for you to finish. We're just going to skip you. So what we can do here is we can say await task in the end. So we can say await task. And then you're going to see that we get a b one, and then we're waiting for two. So if I want to see how this actually works in an asynchronous way, we can do it in between, we can say, okay, print a, then also sleep. So we're going to say await async io dot wait, uh, not dot wait, sorry, dot sleep for one second. And what this means is that we're going to execute print a, and then we're going to go to sleep for one seconds, uh, second, which means that this function now has idle time, which means that this task now has time to be executed. Because up until now we had a b and then it started executing. Now we're doing a and this function is sleeping, which means that we now have CPU time available, which means that this task is now going to to use this chance uh, and start executing itself. So we're not awaiting it. So we're going to see the result here, we're going to say a one B. So it's printing a, it has idle time. And this time this prints one, it executes the function and the task. But then this function also goes to sleep, which means that it is now waiting, this function is printing B and it then terminates, which means that we're now no longer interested in the rest of this function. If we want to be interested in that, we have to say await task. And then you're going to see that we get a one b two. So this is asynchronous, as you can see, we're actually like if you if you look at the way we call this, we actually say a b one two, or if you say, okay, this is first, then we're actually doing one two a b, but the order is a one b two, because we go to sleep and the idle time is being used. Um, so that no CPU time is wasted. Now, you need to take care where you're actually awaiting the task because I think if you await it up here, you're going to wait for the uh, for the whole task to finish. So you're going to see first one, two, and when the task is finished, you're going to see a b. So this is not what you want. Alright, so last but not least, let us talk about return values. What if my function returns something? Let's say other function is not just other function, but it actually returns something in the end. So I want to say return. Uh, I don't know what, let's say I returned a value 10. Now, the problem here is that I can still run this, but I don't get the return value. So how do I actually get the return value from that task, especially if I'm not doing it like that? Um, I need to await the task. And once I await the task, it's going to be done. And when I await the task, I'm going to get the return value of the task. So this task is executing other function. But I don't know when this task is going to be done, because here it says print A, print B, whatever. And if I sleep here for like five seconds, it's going to be done somewhere in between. So if I do it like that, you can see that I'm going to first see two. Now the task is done, and it returned 10. But where do I actually get the return value? If I want to get the return value, I need to await the task. So even if I await it down here, where it's already done, because we saw we first get a one, two, then it returns. And then we get B, I can still await it after the B statement and say await task. 
And this await task gives me the return value. So I can say return value equals await task. And then I can just go ahead and print return. Let me just use an F string here. Return value value was return value. By the way, let me just see one more time if I'm not blocking anything. No, I'm small enough down here. Perfect. Um, but but that is the basic idea. We have return value was return value. So if I run this right now, you're going to see that even though the task is actually done right now, uh, we can still get the return value afterwards. So this what we get here is so called future in Python. It's like a promise in JavaScript. It's basically just giving you the return value of the asynchronous task. Uh, of course, if I choose to await a task on any other position, so let's say I do it. Uh, what happens here? Let's say I do it up here. So let's say I await a task before I even start with a B, then this of course also works. Uh, it doesn't actually matter. The point is you have to await the task. The await keyword, of course, forces you to wait for the task wherever you put it. So if you put it up here, you're going to artificially say, okay, we need to do the task first. If you do it in the end, it doesn't matter where the task is actually done, you're going to get the return value. So if you do it uh, here, you're not going to have any problems because even if I change this to like one, uh, it doesn't really matter as long as I get uh, the return value from the task. Now I need to use the await keyword because if that task doesn't finish, because let's say this function is already done, uh, and I stop at this sleep statement here, of course, I'm not go going to get the return value. So in order to get any return value, I need to await the task. This is obviously the case because if I don't await it until it is finished, it's not going to return anything. So this is how you get the return values from asynchronous functions. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.